This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about context managers and how we can use them in Python. And to keep it simple, context managers manage resources by ensuring proper setup and cleanup. And they are also often used with the with keyword which really simplifies resource management. For example, we might have some code such as with open file.txt in read mode as file. And inside here, we want to read whatever data that file contains. So we'll type in data of type string and insert file.read. Then if we want to see what's inside, we can also print it. And when we run this code, what we should get back is what was inside that file, which in this case is Bob is eating a bagel. And what's nice about this is that it took care of opening the file for us and closing the file for us, which are two very important operations when working with streams. So what I'm going to show you next is how we can create our own context manager so that we can create something that actually works with the with keyword. And for our first example, we're just going to create a simple timer that can demonstrate how the context manager actually works. And before we get started with creating that class, I'm going to import time. And then from types, I'm going to import the traceback type. And from typing, I'm going to import self, any, and type. And I want to mention immediately that this part here is completely optional and is only beneficial if you enjoy the benefits of type safety in Python. Anyway, next we're going to create a class called timer. And inside here, it's going to contain an initializer, which will contain one parameter called name. And this is going to return none. Then inside here, we can assign self.name with the value of name. So when we are creating a context manager, there are two operations that are important to keep track of. One is when we are entering the stream and the other is when we are exiting the stream. And luckily we have two Dunder methods that cover both of those operations. So first we can get started with the enter method. And this is where we handle the setup before we actually enter that stream. And this will return self in this case. This is the object that we're going to be working with once we've entered that stream. And here we're going to just create something called start time, which is going to be of type float, and that's going to equal time.performance counter. And this is going to grab the current time. Then we can print that the timer has started. And finally, we need to return the object that we want to work with as soon as the enter method is called. So this covers one of the two operations we need for our context manager. The second operation will be exiting, and that is defined by the exit dunder method. And as you can see, it contains three arguments, the exception type, the exception value, and the exception traceback. And these are all optionals because once you enter a stream, there's a chance that you're not going to encounter any errors, which means all of these will be set to none if you don't encounter an error. But if you do encounter an error, they're all going to have some values. And I'm going to annotate these real quick so you can understand a bit better what these actually are. So for the exception type, what you will end up with is something such as this, the type of base exception. And again, this is an optional because it might contain none. And for the exception value, what you're going to end up with is practically any value that the exception might contain. So that can be any or none. Otherwise, for the final one, we have the traceback type, which again is an optional. So that's essentially what those types actually are. But since it really convolutes this Dunder method, we're just going to go back to what we had earlier without the type annotations just for this example. And this is going to return none. Anyway, here we're going to type in self.endTime and that's going to equal time.performanceCounter once again. Then we want to grab the elapsed time, which will be of type float, and that's going to equal self.endTime minus self.startTime. And it would be really good to actually turn these into private variables. So we'll type in underscore start time and underscore end time. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a moment. Then at the bottom, we can print that the elapsed time was the following. And I want this to be an F string. Elapsed time dot for F, which will round this to four decimal places. And we'll just add an S after four seconds. 
And one thing I always recommend you do when you're exploring a new function is to print everything you see. For example, you will type in exception type, exception value, and the exception traceback. And we're going to print that each time we exit this stream. So you can see exactly what it contains. Next, let's actually use this context manager. So what I'm going to do is create my if name is equal to main check along with my main entry point and enter some code here. And here we're going to use our context manager. So with timer, and here we need to supply a name, which is going to be a for loop timer, for loop, lol, for loop timer as timer. So this line of code here is going to call that dunder enter method, which means all of this code is going to be executed on that line. So it's going to start our timer, it's going to print that the timer has started, and it's going to return self, which is the instance of the timer. This is going to be self from that point forward, which means that once we type in timer, we can access its attributes, such as the name of the timer, which is the for loop timer. Now, the reason I made these private is because, I mean, watch what happens if we don't. Here we can type in end time without an underscore, and that will mean that we can actually access it much more easily with dot notation. And we don't want that. We don't want the user or whoever is using this code to actually see that. We want this to be contained in the class. This is for internal use. Anyway, what we're going to do here is print timer.name and we're going to perform some silly operations such as for underscore in range 100 million, we're going to pass. And when we run this, you're going to notice that the timer has started, that the name of the timer is the for loop timer, and that to perform this operation actually took 1.15 seconds. Or theoretically, it also included this in the total time, but you get the point. And at the bottom, we returned the exception type, the exception value, and the exception traceback, which was none because this opened and closed successfully. At any point, if we were to raise some sort of exception, such as the infamous Bob exception, you'll see that we'll get a Bob exception and that the three values we get back are these values over here. First, we get the type, which is the class exception. Then we get the value, which is also the class exception, apparently. And then we get the traceback object. And you might be asking, why are these exactly the same? And this is actually because I'm a very silly guy. Instead of typing exception type twice, I should have typed in exception value. So that the next time we run this, you'll notice that we'll actually get the Bob exception back. That was the value of the exception. Getting the class of exception twice was a mistake. But there's something else that we should also pay attention to here. And that is that this code executed even if there was an exception. The exit block will always execute regardless of what happens. So this is the perfect place to add any cleanup code. As you can see inside here, we raised an exception which happened between enter and exit. So exit is pretty much a safety mechanism which gives you a final chance to handle the exception before exiting the code which is very convenient if you're working with files because if you open a file and you start working on it and something goes wrong and then it closes unexpectedly, you can easily corrupt that file or mess up that file. But with the exit under method, you can ensure that you close the file properly before moving on, even if there's an exception. Now at the moment, if we were to run the code with that exception, you'll notice that we're going to have to handle this exception when calling this with block. So to do that, you'd have to type in try and you know handle your accept as usual. But I want to show you something else we can do, which actually suppresses the exception. And I found this quite interesting, but at the bottom of the exit under method, you can return true. And this just tells Python that we want to suppress that message. Like we understand that there's an error, but we don't really care about it. So let's suppress it. So now if we were to run this, it's going to run the code as normal. I mean, as you can see, the operation failed, the lapse time is zero, and we still encountered the exception and got those values back. But in our program, we did not raise an exception. And you should only return true if you know what you're doing. In general, it's a very bad idea to suppress exceptions unless you're doing it on purpose because you have a good reason. But before we conclude this video, I'm going to show you one more example of a context manager so you can really get a good understanding on how they work. So let's delete everything and create something called file manager. 
And pretty much what we're going to do is recreate the functionality of Open. Of course, Open is a professional built-in function that developers have worked on for years. So it's going to be hard to cover everything, but we're going to create a very simple version of it. So first of all, we're going to create an initializer. And this is going to take a file name, type string, and a mode of type string. And as always, it returns none. Then we'll type in self.filename equals file name and self.mode equals mode. Then we can enter the stream by typing in dunder enter. And this is going to return IO, which is what we will be using to work with this text file or any file in general. Then inside here, we'll type in self dot underscore file equals open self file name in self dot read mode or self dot mode. Now we can print custom opening of the following file, which is self dot file name. And at the end of this, we need to return what we want to work with. And that is the self dot underscore file. Then right below that, we can provide the exit dunder method, which will return none. And if there is a file, so if self dot underscore file, we're going to do the following self dot file dot close. So here we're closing this file if there is a file, because there's a chance we'll have an error opening the file. And if we didn't manage to open the file, then we surely won't manage to close it because that file just won't exist, which means we'll encounter another exception here if we don't do this. Then we can print custom closing of self.file name. And it was as simple as that. Now to use it, we're going to create our if name is equal to main check as always. And with our file manager, we can select a file such as this example.txt file in read mode. And we're going to say as f. Then inside here, we can say that the data type string is going to equal f.read. And then we can print that data. And what you should notice is that we will get this output here. Custom opening of example.txt and inside we'll have hello world and then we'll have the custom closing of example.txt. And we can actually perform other operations such as in write mode, we can type in something such as f.write, hello, Bob. And when we run this, it's going to open, it's going to write, and then it's going to close it. Then we can go back and we can read the data. We can type in print.f.read because I'm getting tired of writing data. And we should notice that inside that text file, we now have hello, Bob. And what's important to note is that once again, if we encounter any exceptions, such as the Bob exception, the file is still going to close properly. I mean, you can see that we had the custom opening, hello, Bob, and the custom closing. Well, actually, this doesn't really demonstrate it well because we already performed the operation. So I'm just going to move it up a line before the print statement. Now, when we run it, it's going to open the file. This time we weren't really able to read because there was an exception that occurred before we were able to read the file. But as you can see, we were still able to close the file the way we wanted to. And that's great because we had the chance to perform our cleanup operation, even if there was an exception. But yeah, that's actually everything I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any other questions regarding context managers. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.